Hey everyone, welcome back to Geektopia Island. Uh, we're here with the new Kevin's Creations. I'm your host, Kevin. And I'm Cardwell. And today we're going to be going over a new uh, local deck that we have here. And it's, uh, it's a new version of CL that we haven't seen before. I made the one before and it wasn't the best. This one's a lot more fine-tuned, so I think it'll be, it'll be a little better in the long run. So, Cardo, are you ready to delve into this deck and see what it can do? Yeah. Let's see what we can Voltron up here. Yeah, yeah. All right, so CL, the new, uh, from the Winds of the Almost Moon, she's the green ruler, and she judges for one green, which is already pretty which sweet. Which is awesome. Uh, Energize for one green, and at the end of your turn, you can attach, or you attach an art aura in your graveyard to this card. Yep. So it... It is a mandatory trigger, so it has to happen. So if you have an aura, it gets attached. Just done. And you don't ever want to forget that either. Yeah. Um, so then when she judgments, she uses all those auras that are attached to her. She's a 10-10 when she judgments. And she's got a huge text, so bear with us. Yes. When she comes into the field, you choose up to one of each one choose up to one of each aura attached to her, and then you trigger an ability. Alright. So if she has four, you get four, so forth, so on. So number one. Number one, put four 1-1 one -one counters on target resonator you control. Number two. Put two 1-1, one -one, two, that Put two 4-4 four -four wind spirit resonators with flying into the field. Number three. Recover up to three target magic stones. Number four. You gain 1,000 life, or you can draw two cards, or you can deal 800 damage <laughs> to target J slash resonator. So, like, maybe it's, what, six, seven choices? Yeah, she's got <laughs> six choices that you choose from. Uh... And that's all just when she comes into play. You choose one of those for each aura you have. You can't choose the same one, uh, and they have to go in order. So you, if you skip past number one and two, you can't go back to them. Yeah. You gotta choose further down. Um, but that ability is, in and of itself is really good, just because you get so much value off of the auras. Oh yeah. Uh, she also has imperishable as long as there's three or more auras attached to her. And then when she is destroyed, Remove all auras attached to her from the game. So, whenever the auras are on her on the backside, yes, she's imperishable, and they don't, you don't remove them or anything unless she dies. So they just stay there. But once she dies, they get removed. Yes, so forth, so be it. And then she flips over and she still removes auras. But if she had three, she's imperishable, so you yep. have to do it again. Great. Sounds good. You could get more value out of her in a play trigger. <laughs> be careful though. Just know that they can play Lorite and counter that whole kit and caboodle whole thing. and just make you real sad. Yeah. Been there, done that, and it's it's not a fun experience when you're like, oh, great, I don't get anything. Thanks. Oh, yeah. And that's why our first creature is Lorite as well. <laughs> yeah. You gotta fight fire with fire here, folks. So, just in case you don't know what Laura does, it's a one green uh, quick cast, one two, and it doesn't matter. But when this card is filled, Cancel target activated or automatic ability your opponent controls. Good. Yeah, good. And if you want, remove three spirit magics in your graveyard from the game. Put this card from your graveyard to your hand. Meh. It could be slightly relevant, because we do have... Oh, we do not have any spirit magics. Yeah, we don't so have spirit don't magics in this deck, that. but that's mostly for if you're playing them with Gil. Yeah, yeah. So be it. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. Comes in, counter their lore, hopefully that's what you're doing. Yeah, or their enter the play trigger. Any trigger, really. You're just like, nah, get out. Yep. Thanks. Which is, comes to the next one. No one probably has ever heard this. I <laughs> haven't heard this card until now, so bear with me. It's a two green, reincarnation of the holy tree. It's a zero eight, so a good blocker early game, definitely. Mm -hmm. Since everything like we talked about recently is like the power and toughness is like six yeah. for two drops. All right, whenever another resonator you control is put in the graveyard from the field, search your deck for, for a resonator with total cost less than that resonator, reveal it, Put it in your hand, then shuffle your deck. So if they go to board white, you can refill your hand, depending, you know, on the mana cost. Sadly, <clears> she doesn't do herself, but with our next creature, you're able to get a Lorai at a moment's notice, yeah. pretty much. And the next creature we got is Shade. He's he's too good right now. Yeah. Like Shade Envoy of Darkness is two mana six six. You can tap him, and you deal six damage to target J slash Resonator, and you gain six life. Apologies, six four. But. Oh yeah, six four. My bad. <laughs> But he does uh, have a lot of sixes in here. <laughs> yeah. And he does have resonance and resonance on a, on a darkness magic stone. When, it, when a darkness comes into play, you can pay three black and get him from your graveyard to your hand. So he can recur himself, which is really cool. I mean, you're not really going to worry about that in this deck. You don't really worry about that in general because it's a really high cost to get him back. But 
being able to shoot something at a moment's notice for six, and like Hardwell was saying, get back a Lorite with the other little uh, elemental in play is amazing. Yeah, the fact that it also works because she's a zero eight. So let's say there's nothing on the built like board, but they try to lure at your special. You kill this, ping your own guy because you have to, and then go get a Lorite and then dump. Yeah, it's pretty fun. There's a whole lot of just trickery you can do with Shade. He's yeah. just really good. <laughs> And also to come help with Laura is the <laughs> Seven Disciples. As we've been, we were talking about recently, like no one really plays this guy, and it's insane why they don't. Or ladies and gents, since there's seven of them. So it's two green and one, seven seven. It's a wizard. And when this card ends the field or at the beginning of your main phase, this card gains either oh it gets plus two plus two, swiftness, flying, first strike, precision, drain, or barrier till end of turn. If you control a Lorite, uh, you gain all those. So Just a beast yeah. of a, a creature for three. Yeah, three mana, you could potentially have a nine nine with a plethora of abilities. Yes. <laughs> and not really care what they do. Yeah. It's just insane what how good Laura's disciples are. Cause like we were saying, six is the magic number. So a three drop seven seven's already good. Yep. Because it blocks and deals on most things. You make that a nine nine that can kill even bigger dudes, great. Cause with precision and first strike, then you're just swinging into dudes and, yeah. and gaining life, you know? Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's extremely good. Yeah, the next dude we have is a little bigger. Uh, he's one of the big heavy hitters of the deck. Inheritor of the Stars, Gilapis. And he really is one of the best creatures in all of the new frontiers at the moment. Four drop for a 10-10 with flying and barrier. And when he, he can't be cancelled if you play Gil as your ruler, we don't, no. that doesn't really matter. Yep. Uh, at the beginning of your main phase, you put a mystery counter in your J ruler. We don't do anything with mystery counters, that doesn't really matter. Nope. Uh, you can remove an elemental in your graveyard from the game, produce one of any color, and put a 1-1 counter on him. So, the the 2-drop that we were talking about earlier, the, the reincarnation. Yeah, oh. that is an elemental, so you do get actually some use out of it, not a crazy amount, but even still, having a 10-10 flying barrier creature, it's just that's just super good in good. of itself. Like, yeah. you can't... This dude's so hard to get off the board, it's ridiculous. Yeah, and that's the combination I was thinking of with the Spare Magic, since it's actually Elementals with this skill, so <laughs> yeah. it works out. And right. then our final top big guy of the deck is... He's a very pretty boy. Yeah, the second advent of Hope, Grimia. He's from Winds of the Almas Moon, uh, 5 mana for 12-12. If your life is 2,000 or less, you may pay 3 less to play this card. And you can remove an ore in your graveyard from the game. This card gains flying, drain, and barrier until the end of the turn. So he can protect himself, which is amazing once he's in play, because yeah. you're just so like, nah, remove this ore, I get with, barrier. With Thanks. no additional cost besides the auras, which you're going to have. So. Yeah, yeah, you're going to have him in the graveyard, and he's just, he can be cost, he can cost less to play. Mm -hmm. And for 2 white, for a 12-12, is pretty good. Yeah. Like, I'll take it all day. A great blocker at that point when you can definitely give it drain. Yeah. So to gain your life back up. Yeah. That was, that was very awesome. All right, with that, that's the end of the creatures. We'll head to the spells here. And uh, of course, playing green, severing wins. It's uh, usually cost zero, but the real cost is actually two and two green. Quick cast if your opponent plays two or more spells this turn, you can pay zero, four less, and play this card. Cancel target spell. It's just too good to not run if you're yeah. playing green. Like it, it really, really is. is. Uh, the next one we got is Winds of Salvation. It's three mana, two green and one, and it's remove target spell. But the thing about it, it's an aura, so it's yeah. already a counter spell and it's an aura. Yep. The other thing that's really good about Winds of Salvation is it actually can counter the Gil Lapis if they're playing them with Gil, because it doesn't really say counter. It says remove target spell. Yeah. So doesn't... you're like, hey, no, get out. Thanks. Which is pretty good. Yeah, it doesn't say cancel, so just remove it. Just like yeah. it never existed in the first place. Yeah. All right, the next one is of course Fair Spell. Uh, everyone knows this guy. One green quick cast. Uh, cancel target spell with quick cast. Uh, Sherry like destroys that deck pretty much. Yeah, Fair Spell is really good right now because it's it counters pretty much everything that people are playing in the format. Because Shahrazad's all about quick cast. Yeah. Kirik has a lot of quick cast cards really, and just. It's just is really good in what it can do. All right. What about the one of your? It seems like not your favorite yeah. spells. All but right. One you use quite a bit. So I enjoy this card a lot. It's called a Mother's Love. It's one mana, quick cast. It's one white. It is a chant aura, so you can remove it for CL or Grimia. 
and you draw a card or prevent the next 800 damage that would be dealt to target J slash Resonator or yourself this turn. I've always been a gimmicky card player for those kinds of cards. Like I love weird prevent damage cards. I don't know why I always have, but for one mana, preventing eight damage is pretty amazing. Yeah. And it can either target you or a dude. Great. Especially if they're trying to willing to trade or like, this makes you where you can trade with their character or yeah. their creature and not yours. So. Or early game, you're just like, ah, cool, I want to draw a card, thanks. Yep. And it's all quick cast, so you can still do it on your on their turn or your turn. Exactly. And like we talked about, it's an aura. So yeah, great. Done. The next is Resuscitating Will. Uh, one white, quick cast, and recover target J slash Resonator. So just anything if you want to swing in, gain double life, or go for the kill. Yeah. It's just good utility. Yeah, Resuscitating Will is your uh, I'm going to end the game card. Yeah. And it's an aura, so you could do more things with it too. But it literally is just, we're going to end the game right now. Yeah. Or even Laura at Seven Disciples, you swing in, kill a dude, Resuscitating Will, gain life. Do it again to another dude yeah. or swing Thanks. in. Like, it's just really good for one white. It's ridiculous. And uh, the channel favorite card, Yay. Flourishing Hope. It's always there. If we're playing white, it's probably in the deck, because let's get real. We should just get this tattooed on us. That's what, <laughs> we might need like, to. We already know what this does by heart. Uh, but yeah, one mana quick cast white. Uh, target J slash Resonator gains. This card cannot be destroyed until the end of turn. Then this card inverts. And it inverts into Burgeoning Despair, which is a black and two quick cast. Can only be played for your remove zone. But target opponent sacrifices two Resonators. Yeah, just good. So, thanks. Yeah. Just the, the choose two and they go away. Get out of my life. <laughs> and of course, I'll, I'll let you go ahead and finish it off. All right, so the other card that's really good is the final battle. It's black and X. Your opponent's whole board gets minus X, minus X. J's slash resonators get minus X, minus X. And you can pay two life to add one mana to it. Yep. So more or less, you pay 22 life, minus 11, minus 11. It's pretty, at the moment, that's a pretty well-rounded number to kill Gil Lapis. I've done it plenty of times. Yep. Because that's the only way you get rid of Gil is with Final Battle if he's in play because it's just it's a pain. Yeah, and with also you have Shade, Lorite, Grimia, and, and yeah, the Pretty Boy Grimia, uh, and Sia they all herself. gain life. Yeah, so so you're able to pay a whole lot of life easily with this deck, just the ability to to kill all of their stuff. Yeah, and, when you, and technically you just need one black and then life. Yeah, and then keep your mana to able to get back there. Yeah. All right, so sideboard, we had a couple more things. Uh, we have two elemental evil uprisings. Uh, one black quick cast, remove all cards in your opponent's graveyard from the game. Players cannot chase to this. Very necessary. It stops a whole lot of things right now. It stops Shahrazada and their judgment turn pretty hard. Uh, it stops Seeds of Rebirth from coming and doing anything. Uh, if anyone's ever playing Dark Elves, it stops that pretty hard. And Gil as well. Just any kind of like graveyard thing, it can stop pretty easily. Uh, we have three spot removals, Forbidden Art, White and a Black Quick Cast, Destroy Target Resonator, because you need it. Yeah. Uh, we have the four Abduls that you can switch out for Shades pretty pretty easily. If you're playing against either Lumia or Time Spinning Witch or anything that has a whole lot of coming to play triggers, just tell them no. Yep. Because Abduls is 6-6 six, six for two, Resonators enter your opponent's field, don't cause their abilities to trigger. Pretty good. Great. Uh, we add in another final battle. And we have another Fair spell and another Winds of Salvation, all in the board for extra control packages. And the final card in the board is Whirling Winds, and it's uh, one green quick cast, it is a chant aura, draw a card or remove target attack and J slash resonated from battle. So it's like Scarlet's Agony except that Scarlet's gets to do both, you get to choose one or the other. You don't yeah. get to draw a card and remove a dude, you just choose one or the other. But this is an aura for you, so it helps you in the long run because you get to do more with an aura. Yep. That's the that's the drawback for it. Uh, the stones are really simple. Four white green stones, four black green stones, one white black stone, and then one ethereal wind magic stone, which is the uh, seal special stone. It adds a green, and you produce, you banish this card, put an aura from your graveyard into your hand, or from your remove zone into your hand. So after you've removed cards, you put one back. <laughs> Pretty awesome. And the cute thing with that stone is you can banish it to get back your Winds of Salvation that you countered something with and removed. Just be like, I kind of that again. <laughs> Thanks. Pretty cute. Yeah. Overall, this deck seems really, really fun in the, like, it's a lot more mid-range than anything. Yeah. But once you get there, it's very, very good on the tempo because you just get to keep the game in your favor. 
because you have a lot of big dudes that keep it in your favor. Uh, you're going to be relying pretty heavily on Lorette's Disciple and Shade, I can tell, but other than that, it's fantastic. <laughs> and what, what green card doesn't actually, or what green deck doesn't just have a backbone of Lorette, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. Yeah, I mean, Lorette just does work for you. Yeah. You, you. If you play green, you'll know about Lorette. Uh, but overall, check this deck out, guys. The deck will be down below if you want to see the deck list. And uh, as always, check back with us at Geektopia Island. We'll have new content every week. And then go enjoy this at your locals. Have a good night. Goodbye. All right, guys. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And also hit the bell that gets you notifications on all of our content. Also, if you need the latest deck tech, it's going to be to the right. And if you need the latest gameplay videos, it's going to be down below.